everyone, this is Arushi, back at it again with yet another video. One of the first resto pub places that I decided to check out here in Chennai happened to be Radio Room. Over the past couple years, this place has really become the talk of the town and you have a buzzing crowd showing up during the weekend, especially on Saturday nights when this place is just lit. Though I have landed up here in the evenings and checked out the night scene, I really wanted to check out what this place had to offer in terms of food, so I decided to try out their Sunday brunch. The thing that I do like about Radio Room is it happens to be as lively at night as it is during the day. And this brunch starts around 1 o'clock um, on Sunday afternoon and goes on all the way till 4 or 5 in the evening, which is how long we were there. That's how long it took us to eat all that food. So I'm going to break down in this video some of the things I liked, some of the things I thought could be better, and what I recommend. Now, like in pretty much every brunch that you're served, you start off with the starters and most of them are usually on an unlimited basis. So just keep in mind that before you head down to Radio Room for a brunch, or frankly any brunch that you happen to check out, be sure that you are completely on an empty stomach. And the starters are just basically going to keep on coming and you keep eating until you get full. But if you're completely full, you're not going to be able to handle the main course and the dessert afterwards. Okay, so starting off in the starters, what I did like. In the vegetarian option, I really enjoyed the Berry Peri Paneer Tikka. So essentially what it is, it is just cottage cheese kind of drizzled all over with tikka masala and you have jalapenos and it's just sort of like this mix. It's spicy, it's um, tangy and um, it's something that is light to start off with. Another option in the vegetarian course uh, set of starters that I really enjoyed was the falafel uh, shawarma. Now essentially what it is is um, these bite-sized shawarma pieces that are filled with falafel and a bunch of other crunchy uh, bits. It's a different interesting spin on a conventional street food kind of served in bite-sized pieces. Again it was light, it was crunchy um, and just kind of really refreshing. The non-vegetarian option that I just couldn't stop having enough of, um, there were two. One was the calamari fritters with the spicy tomato sauce and the second one was the chili vodka chicken wings. Starting off with the calamari fritters, you're not really used to the taste of seafood or fish, you might not prefer this, but I being a bong or a Bengali, I love me some seafood. This was made really well. They were basically like these spiral, um, crunchy, fried uh, calamari. I could dip it in the tomato sauce. It was just a nice mix of flavors. I just couldn't stop having them. Um, I would recommend the chili vodka chicken wings. So I'm not sure if they have a little bit of vodka in there. Um, probably might because I really got addicted really fast. It was soft and it wasn't overly cooked or overly baked in any way and it wasn't like flooded with too much of sauce and definitely an enjoyable one out of the starters. Okay, moving on to what I really didn't like or didn't find too impressive. Out of the starters, I am going to call out the chicken makhni papri chaat. So essentially what it was um, were these chaat chip like things that they served chicken pieces on. So I think they tried to replicate uh, some sort of like a chaat item um, using chicken pieces but it just really didn't work. Uh, frankly for me it was bland, there was really no flavor. Uh, even the papri chaats were just really dry and not too impressive for me. By the time we got to the end of starters, we were so full that we had to end up leaving the place at least twice to kind of just rejuvenate and just kind of digest everything and just be able to make room for the mains. But with what I managed to taste of the mains, um, what I have to say about the main that I had, which was the grilled Mahi Mahi Siciliana. Um, again, basically what it is are chopped Mahi Mahi fish pieces and a little bit of, I believe it was um, noodles. You can have it with rice or noodles. 
and some sliced vegetables on the side. I was not a huge fan of the fish. I didn't really know what type of fish they'd be serving me and when it showed up um, and I had a bite, it turned out to be way, way more chewy than I would have liked. Um, with that being said, the pasta and the vegetables was just delicious. And so once again, because we were just so, so, so full, we just couldn't manage to eat much at all. So we ended up having just like one fourth of each dish and just kind of shared amongst each other because we were just stuffed. Um, uh, but the mains really did not um, impress me as much as I thought they would in comparison to the starters for this brunch. Once you've managed to get through the starters and the mains, you finally land up at the best part, which is of course dessert. Actually ordering all of the options that were there, which were the chocolate fudge cake, the bread and butter pudding brandy truffles, um, the Nutella custard, Moldova crumble, and the gulab creme brulee tart. Oh, we didn't have the last one, but those are the options from the dessert menu. Really, really, really genuinely enjoyed the Nutella custard Moldova crumble. Um, and what that was, was again, it was, it was served in sort of like a shot jar, or just a layer of like the Nutella cream, um, along with bread crumbles, and I think it was just cheesecake in the middle. It was so yum, and just the perfect amount that they served that we ended up actually ordering, I think, two or three of those. <laughs> Top it all off, of course, chocolate fudge cake that was served with a scoop of vanilla ice cream to just kind of wash down all of that food. Uh, but unfortunately, the brownie fudge really didn't kind of hit it off for me at all because it was too crusty and dry. During the daytime, I don't really like to drink much, so we ended up ordering uh, mocktails, which was again an unlimited serve of mocktails. My favorite one, the one I enjoyed the most, was the peach phase. The one that wasn't so great for me was this berry flavored purple one. It's too tart, kind of sour almost, um, That this taste that it had, so I didn't really prefer that one, but the peach phase was just great. One of the reasons why Radio Room just happens to be so popular is just because of the ambience. There are all these great pieces of artwork and sort of has this sports bar vibe to it but also really loungy and very comfortable and you know there are a bunch of these installations of like old radio sets kind of put up across the bar counter. Comfortable sort of vibe to it. It's not overwhelming in any way. It works both for daytime and nighttime. Also another reason why I think the ambience just works really well is because of the crowd. It is kind of the more of the urban, sophisticated, working crowd of Chennai. The thing you do have to kind of keep in mind, they're quite strict about their entry. In fact, you have to have an ID on you, which they will check um, even during the daytime. It turned out they checked us even before we entered for the brunch. They're quite strict about their um, entry policy, which is actually a good thing because um, they kind of regulate the kind of people that uh, go into As for the service, we were really, really pleased. We ended up going to Radio Room. Do ask for this waiter named Suresh because he is extremely friendly, extremely helpful. And because we couldn't finish our mains, in fact, normally they don't allow you to pack up any brunch or buffet items, but because we just couldn't finish it, they packed it up for us and allowed us to take our food, remaining food home. They let us leave the restaurant two or three times because we needed to step outside get some air and digest our food and they let us just walk away from the table with all our stuff and trust us to come back to pay for our food uh, the price for our buffet our brunch was a roughly around 1500 uh, this was a non-alcoholic brunch if you want to have the alcoholic option that is two and a half uh, 2.5 K Plus, I believe with tax and everything for me a little bit on the higher end uh, for someone like me who doesn't really go to too many weekend brunches honestly it's just once in a blue moon uh, but if I wanted to make this a regular thing the price of it just unfortunately is just a little too steep in the bar menu that they have they serve a pint of beer for 200 rupees and most of their alcoholic beverages range anywhere from um, 350 and above would I really recommend um, 
you know, this as like a regular place that I would end up going to. Uh, it's just a little too steep for me in terms of price. All in all, I would probably give my overall experience uh, at Radio Room probably a four out of five. Comment down below if you have been to Radio Room, what are some of the things that you would recommend and what is it that you like, dislike about the place. Um, let me know what other places, uh, restaurants that I should be reviewing here in Chennai. Stay tuned for when I announce um, a meetup for subscribers here in Chennai that will also get an opportunity to be in a video with me. I will be announcing details about that soon enough. Stay tuned on my Instagram page. Stay subscribed, turn on the post notifications to stay updated every time I go live with a new video. That's it for now, your Global Daisy signing off. Until next time.